Well, everybody, we're just going to wait just a minute until we get started here, uh, just to make sure that we have a chance to get everybody in. It's really weird, not, me not wearing my headset, Jeremy. I'm yeah, so used to it. that, uh, but uh, it's okay. You're coming through a very expensive speaker system, so you Perfect. sound awesome, dude. Okay, great. All right. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, our guest today is Jeremy Kyle. Uh, he's going to talk a lot about podcasting in general. You know, you guys hear it from us all the time, uh, why we think podcasting is such a great idea. But it, it's kind of nice to hear from one of our clients who uh, opted in, who chose to utilize our um our system here, and we're going to dive in a little bit more deeply on, on why he did that. But Jeremy, before we get rolling too deep into this, would you mind telling uh, everybody just a little bit about you and your practice? Yeah, my name is Jeremy Kyle. I run the Kyle Financial Partners out of uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we focus exclusively on retirement planning. And uh, we have a couple advisors, a couple of staff people, and love helping people with the retirement. So why... <laughs> First off, how did you find out about us? Let's start there. Yeah. Well, I found out about you from uh, looking at podcasts, and it, it was your old one, the Mod Marketing Podcast. Mm. Yeah, so that, that brings you back a couple of years, Matt. Just a, just but, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. So I, was, I just uh, spent an entire summer uh, listening to it. So anytime I was out for a run, mowing the lawn, listening to the podcast, I thought, these guys are speaking my language. And as soon as I got to a situation where I could – start doing the podcasting. I wanted to want to do that. Get my message out there. Okay. What, what, what does that mean though? I think that's probably something a lot of our clients and listeners of this podcast uh, and this webinar want to know is what changed, what allowed you to open up this door? Yeah, I was part of a career advisor network, just like a lot of people might be, with, you know, the Edward Jones and Northwestern mutuals and, you know, Morgan Stanley's that kind of, that kind of stuff. So now I'm part of a uh, hybrid RAA network. And so they, encourage us to have our own brand, our own voice. And we're using podcasting as kind of the foundation, the the hub and spoke in a way. It's the hub. Everything flows out from uh, from the podcast, really. And Jeremy, that, that's really our model here. So when you heard about our model having this be the hub, what was it about podcasting? What What was the need that you needed filled by somebody like us? Yeah, well, I'm just trying to create content. Uh, got a lot of ideas. And uh, I feel like I do a decent enough job as a writer, but it sure takes a lot of time. And so just having that scheduled, and I'm I'm also someone too that needs uh, help with staying, I don't say on task, but uh, you know if it's not on the schedule, it doesn't get done. Sure. But every two weeks, a podcast gets done, which then everything flows out from there as far as ideas on what to do on the website or webinars to do. And, and then of course, all the social media that you guys are are posting for me. Well, and you have a very specific market, right? And so when you were building this, your goal was to really educate people. And, and I think when somebody thinks about podcasting, that that's one of the components that seems to be the most successful for advisors like you is education. So do you consider yourself really more of an education-based or are you more of a sales-based advisor? Oh, definitely education-based uh, if you look at all my uh, psychological profiles, there's not a sales bone in my body, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, in a, in a way. <laughs> well, now, you've actually used this in tandem with another, uh, more like a, a lead or sales program. Uh, let, mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit, and then I'm going to... Uh, pause and give us a, give everybody a little background on, on why we built what we built. And then I'm going to bring you back in. Is that cool? That's great. So yeah. how do you use this with your other system that you have? Yeah. Um, you know, actually, if it's right, I want to just bring up something you would have brought up on our kind of our pre-call uh -huh. and your question was who should consider podcasting? Oh, dude, Maybe don't. Yeah, that's from freaking you. awesome. Yeah, do that. But, but that was your question. Who should consider podcasting? And I believe it's anyone who can add value within a niche. And of course you and, uh, Kirk are all about uh, niches mm -hmm. and the mantra I have when it comes to marketing is you got to do your brand, then your messaging, then your marketing and your brand is who you are and who you serve. Your message is how you speak with who you serve and marketing is how do you find who you serve. So if you're someone that wants a brand and you have a specific message to a specific, specific market, then that's, that's who podcasting's right for. Sure. Sure. Yeah. 
how that fits into some of our other uh, lead activities. And um, you guys are great where you somewhat knock the, um, you know, buying leads and the uh, uh, 10X your investment, that kind of stuff. And when it comes to buying the leads, uh, I've been doing that for three, four years, different leads you can buy online. You know, you're on LinkedIn, you're on Facebook, and you're going to see as, hey, advisors, do you want 20 leads this month? That kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of it's hyperbole, but uh, at the same time, you can get a lead. You can get a name. You pay some money, you get a name. You can try to reach out to them. And I've been doing that for about four years now. And until this year, we were averaging about three to four percent conversion rate. So you got a hundred leads, and three or four of them became our clients. And that was good enough to break even the first year. So we thought, let's just keep it on going. You know, if we can break even the first year, keep it on going year two and three. That's 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 great. Well, now since we started the podcast, we've moved up to about five or six percent. So our, our closing rate's about 50% greater. And I believe part of it has to do with when people reach out to us, it's you and a couple others. And if you're just the regular generic stuff that they're hearing from the others, and then you, your odds aren't that good. But if you say, yeah. I focus on this one thing, here's all this stuff to back it up, your odds go up for the right people. And so with some of the stuff that's popped in, we focus, you'll probably ask me about it later, but we focus a lot on Harley Davidson and we energies, which are two local companies here, there's, and the lead services, people probably work at these companies. And just about every mm -hmm. time someone comes in, we find out they work at Harley Davidson or we energies. It's just like, Oh, this is great. You gotta, <laughs> here's 17 <laughs> things that we have about you because we, we, we worked with it before. So it just, it's added value to the people that we're, we're meeting with. We're finding people in our niche, um, by even finding the, you got the general leads that you're buying, but the people that are in our niche, we can really focus on them. And our, and our closing rate is up by 50%. It, it, those are real numbers at the end of the day, aren't they? Yeah. What's uh, it's, it's great. And just to give you an example there, this is, this is just not necessarily about podcasting itself. Although uh, the lady that uh, I'm referring to here, she listens to all our podcasts. So mm -hmm. she'll email in saying, you said I should be looking at this you know, like long-term care insurance or yeah. life insurance or Roth conversions. What do you think? And so it's just, I'm having a conversation with her without me having to be on the, on the phone, <laughs> it's, which is, which is awesome. But just think of this couple in particular with this lead service, uh, the pandemic hit in March and you just give them a budget, you get to a thousand or 2000 bucks and then they just stop sending you leads because you, you, you ran a budget. Well, halfway through March, everyone was looking online for financial advice. So the service said, do you want to put more money in? Because there's definitely more leads there you could buy. So I said, sure, we doubled the budget. And this couple came to us the last day. So the last day of March was the last lead from that month. I never would have talked to them if I hadn't taken the investment to, to double mm -hmm. what we were spending on, on marketing. Oddly enough, they're the only lead we closed that month. <laughs> so wow. of all the people who came in, the fact that we doubled our budget was the one that was the one lead that we we got from that one specific month. So you got to be able to put in the investment when the opportunity uh, presents itself, and that's been a good investment. It's it's led to a good number of referrals and and a good oh. you know, amount of business with them specifically. Well, and I think you know a lot of people talk about ROI, and before we really jump deeper into the presentation, Kirk and I talk a lot about ROT, right? Return on time. Mm -hmm. So. Do you think that by outsourcing the lead gen stuff that you're that you're doing, and that's with um, what is that company called? Well, Smart Asset is where we, we buy the leads from, but now okay. we have another company called Indiefin, and they are booking the appointments on our calendar. Okay. So we're paying for the leads from one place, and then we're outsourcing the kind of calling services with another one. Don't you? I mean, that takes some trust, Jeremy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, trust and money, but you're right. ROT, return on time, right. and uh, you can deal with. Uh, 30 leads yourself mm -hmm. and all the time it takes with it, or you can do with the um, 10 people that show up on your calendar. Yeah. And that's, that's the better use of time. Well, and, and so, you know, the brief history about what we've built here, uh, Kirk and I both realized very quickly that advisors didn't want to be told what to do much like Jeremy. They wanted somebody to do it for them in a way that was just very easy and convenient. And so what we ended up doing was we studied two people uh, and we reverse engineered what they've built. And this is what we have uh, Jeremy on board with is the program that we're referring to right now, which is really how to become a subject matter authority without having to do a substantial amount of work. 
Seth Godin went under the glasses. Gary Vanderchuk are the two people we really looked at. And as Jeremy already said, you know, he's he can create content, but when he does get that lead right in from from those two companies that are in his area and he can send them 17, 20 pieces of stuff mm -hmm. that talks directly to them. I mean, Jeremy, that's got to make them feel different, more like not necessarily more appreciated, but but like you're really directly talking to them, which is going to separate you from the advisor down the street who's just mm -hmm. going to be like, well, I can do a great financial plan for you. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Well, it's the uh, it's the proof of it all, and I'm thinking of two people uh, right now. Where one of them, he hasn't said specifically that he chose us because of the podcast or emails, but every time we talk to him, he's referring to things from the podcast and the emails, <laughs> and he he chose us at literally every single time, and he chose us, moved some money over, which is great. Uh, but then another lady as well too. We cat down to the, the final two, in a way, and uh, we were more expensive. Than the other, um, other folks by twenty, you know, to thirty percent. So maybe yeah. like thirty basis points. You know, one point three instead of one. Let's just go with that. And she said, "Well, I'm just being honest with you. You're more expensive." And we just talked through and uh, the different things that we we do. And she called us up a week later and said, "I'm going to work with you." And I asked, uh, you know, what what pushed that over the edge? What caused you to choose to work with us? And she said, "Well, I know they are cheaper, but you." focus specifically on retirement and that's specifically what I need. Yeah. So she happened to work at uh, one of the companies I uh, focus in on somebody that helped out as well too, but she, she drove down on that um, retirement planning. That's our, that's our niche and our entire mm -hmm. website that you guys helped me come up with. And the last 26 episodes of the podcast uh, have focused specifically on that. So she's, yeah. there's the proof I could say it, or you can go to the website and see everything and all the podcasts. Uh, that that prove that specifically and what what jeremy's able to do here is he's able to get the appropriate attention but build trust in a much quicker way that's exactly what that story says to me is she is going to pay a little bit more because she trusts that you are the expert that she's truly looking for now <clears throat> the other thing too and, and jeremy is a little bit of an anomaly here because he's achieved success much quicker than a lot of our clients have and part of it is that he's got this multi-prong approach uh that's one number two he very specifically focuses on these two markets and three he has his brand dialed in so he's already at like the you know the 40 or 50 yard line where some of our people are starting way back at the 20. So we do want everybody to understand that you do need to be patient. But as Jeremy continues to grow with his podcast, he's 26 in, you know, uh, probably a couple hundred social media posts at this point, he's just gaining social proof and momentum. And with that momentum, you really need to make sure that you're patient, but it's all about execution. Could Jeremy Dunn do this? Could he have hired a person, you know, to do everything that we do for him? Well, absolutely. But then he would have had to manage them, pay them benefits, uh, you know, deal with all of the stuff that most of you as financial services professionals don't like, which is, you know, a lot of the business stuff that goes along with that. And then finally, we have to pay attention to what people care about. And that's right where Jeremy's story is, especially with the success story with this lady he was just referring to, is he was speaking directly to her needs. People care about how you're going to help them, not how they're going to help you. It's always that what's in it for me. That's the focus that you need to have. Uh, Jeremy, do you have any feelings about any of these Gary Vaynerchuk quotes here that we have up on the screen? A little bit. So when you said pay attention to what people care about, I also think it's important to pay attention to the words that they use mm. because uh, at Harley Davidson and we energy, they refer to the same thing in different terms. It's just mm. whichever that company was talking about. So when you, when you're hearing people talking about specific terms and then you use it back to them, if you even use it, you know, they're from the specific company and you're using those words that you know are that company specific you already feel like a, an insider, uh, mm -hmm. which is great. And you also mentioned momentum too. Um, I think you even had a slide out once or um, one pager that talked about 270 days until, for, until a greater practice. Mm -hmm. You talked about momentum marketing and just how it kind of, you know, grows over, go over time. Our, our first podcast went up out, uh, I think right around Thanksgiving of last year. Mm. And it probably was right around nine months later that things started uh, rolling. This week we had somebody email us from Nebraska and we're in Wisconsin and I asked them how they came across us. She said, Oh, I list, I don't have a, 
a phone that has podcasts on it. So at work, I go to Google Podcasts oh. and I listen to podcasts. I just typed in retirement and yours is one of the ones that li I listen to. So I, I went to it and right now we're the number three episode on Google Podcasts. <laughs> and uh, when I looked on Monday, uh, when she told me this, we were in the top 15. And then I was telling my business coach about it this morning. So I Google it or I looked it up real quick on the Google Podcasts. Uh, so it's the Google specific uh, platform of it. We were in the top 10. So somehow it's, something's trending there and it wasn't trending 11 months ago. Sure. It just kind of popped into the radar just the last couple of months because of whatever momentum that we have going on. And I absolutely love the fact that one, that you're, you're actively involved in making sure that what you're doing is communicating directly to your ideal client and prospect, right? I absolutely love that. And the other thing that I think is really fun is, you know, you are an expert and, and we're going to pause on that uh, here because, you know, most of you have hit Gladwell's 10,000 hours, right? Most of you have advanced education, advanced designations, which means that you are truly an expert. And I like to hearken or refer to you guys a lot like the Beatles, right? So the, the Beatles, before they ever hit the Ed Sullivan show, they were already freaking experts, right? They were playing shows and upon shows upon shows and working out all of the little things. Most of you have worked out all of the little, uh, you know, pits and valleys and hiccups in your practice. And now it's time. Now it's time for you to really start positioning yourself as your, you know, the authority that you truly are. This is the continuum that we have talked about before. We've got like 20 iterations of this, uh, this little bar graph here. But as you continue to build up and put the effort in and put the time in like Jeremy has since, you know, Thanksgiving of last year, it's only going to get better. And, and it really is a numbers game. I think it's fun when, when people, new services come into our marketplace, right? And they're like, oh, you know, we're, we're the best of the best to help financial advisors, uh, you know, with their social media and their podcasting. And, and my first question to them is, how many podcasts have they done? Right. Well, we publish over 1,500 podcasts for financial services professionals, you know, 26 for Jeremy alone. And we've done about 30,000 social media posts. And when Jeremy goes up against somebody else, whether he gets a lead from wherever he's getting leads or, you know, whether it's a referral and somebody looks at his podcast and sees these 26 episodes in, it's going to be more than that. Right. And then another advisor who starts tomorrow has one podcast up. Jeremy is going to be looked at as that subject matter expert. Truly, truly, truly because he's put in the time. I want everybody to think about that. The amount of time and effort you put into your podcast is going to be directly felt by your ideal client. They're going to notice that Jeremy Kyle wants so badly to educate people about retirement in his area, especially these two companies, that he puts out so much time and so much effort. Well, really, it's a reduced amount of time and effort because he outsources lots of stuff, which is super smart. But, you know, this is the opportunity for him to stay in his lane and really focus on what he's good at and outsource it to other people. When you think about that trust, though, I, I want to because now you have not only people who are providing you with leads, you're going up against other financial services professionals and, and winning at a higher, higher percentage rate. Plus, you have people now who are booking time on your calendar. You outsource your social and your podcasting to us. How long did it take you, my friend, to feel comfortable rescinding that level of control? Um, maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm bored with it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, in, a, in a way... Uh, because I was in that career network kind of a captive agency type of situation, uh, I didn't have that opportunity. Yeah. So I've been building it up for years, listening to your podcast, those other podcasts of I want to do these different things. And you know, we have an outsized, outsourced uh, virtual assistant. We have mm -hmm. uh, outsourced organic and uh, on-page uh, search engine optimization. Uh, we've got the the marketing that you guys do that we buy the leads from, that somebody's uh, calling and booking on our calendar. Um, I think maybe it was just a, a built up amount of, I need to get some help. And that was the quickest, easiest way to do it. Uh, actually it was about two, three years ago. I broke away from the team that I was a part mm -hmm. of, and I had spent years wanting to, uh, build up our marketing and our infrastructure. And they, they just didn't want to do that. And that was fine. So when I broke away, I instantly just went out and hired two people. What I oh. should have thought was 
I was trying to hire for my old business and now I have a completely new business when there's one advisor instead of three. And what I found really quickly is that I had kind of over hired. So I had these very good people with nothing to do because mm. I knew exactly who I wanted and what level to get, but it was for a bigger business. And so, you know, I, I, one of them, I freed up their time. The other one decided to free up her time uh, with us. And now I was down back to, we didn't have that. And just outsourcing was sourcing was the easiest, quickest way. I kind of made the mistake of, of over hiring mm. and then just realized I can, I can ramp it up. You know, I can buy 10 hours a week of a virtual assistant, move it to 15 yeah. or 20 really quick. I can have you guys do the podcast and then add on the social media and then add on the LinkedIn, you know, if that's the way you want to go uh, approach it. So how much now you're a numbers guy. So I mean, you're whipping out numbers <laughs> left and right. So when you look at gross, not net on how much you're spending on these three marketing programs specifically, what rough percentage are you allocating to this period? Yeah, I'm allocating roughly 15% of our gross revenue. Okay. And the two thoughts I have along with that is if I can grow at 15% a year, which I've done, thankfully, the last two years, mm -hmm. then you're you're paying for your marketing out of growth. It's kind yes. of free, <laughs> you know, anyway, the other way I look at it is that if you can, um, if you can recoup exactly what you're putting into your marketing, then it's also kind of free. Sure. So you have like two metrics of, you know, when I buy a lead for 150 bucks, you know, and there's thousands, you know, not thousands, but a lot of them that you do. And you look at the math of your revenue coming in for buying those leads. Can I make that up within a year? That's one way I, I look at it. Sure. Um, Bigger companies might say, who cares about a year? Wait three, four, five. Go borrow some money and go 10 exit real quick. Yeah. I just figure a smaller business. Let's just let's just make let's uh, let's make it up in a year. But yeah, if you can just pay for it from your growth. And if you want to grow it 10% a year, 15% a year, I don't know how you're gonna get there unless you're spending 10 or 15% right. of your money on on growth. That's something that's always just blown me away is people like, I don't understand why I'm not growing. Okay, mm -hmm. well, let's ask you a really hard question. Are you spending any money to help yourself grow? And, right. you know, some some professionals in general will say, well, I guess, you know, no, no, I'm really not. I, I you know, I, I, I've never done that. Well, you've never mm -hmm. grown then to, and, you know, you also look at the annuity aspect or the annuitized aspect of those things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you make that money back on that one client for that $150 or thousand dollars that you spent to get that landed, that one client for cost or mm -hmm. client acquisition, dude, if that pays itself in a year, then that's gravy money the right. next year. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. So anyway, well, the other thing that I think is really powerful to people to understand is uh, podcasting is everywhere now. It's ubiquitous within professional people. If you are truly an expert, uh, you're going to have a podcast, right? Uh, it's just our industry seems to be much slower. But this last statistic is the one that I want to focus on, which is, you know, over a half a million podcasts were started just this year in, in 2020. But very few of them are going to last past six episodes. And that's when I was going back to saying, you know, Jeremy's got 26 in the can. Um, he is going to be so far ahead because if he has 26 and then all of a sudden 27, 28, 29, and somebody stopped at four, the listener, the audience, the people who you're trying to build and attract with trust are going to want to continue to listen to the person who's continuing to make deposits in the educational karmic pool, right? That's just mm -hmm. the reality of the situation. And the statistic that I want is not on here, which is which is weird. You guys can all read these while I'm, while I'm going through this. But the average podcast listener makes $250,000 a year. And just think about that. So many of you are chasing uh, people who are going to be taking withdrawals, whereas podcasting can also attract the younger people, very affluent people who are looking for ways to save more money in ways that, guess what, everybody, they don't know. Right. They have no idea how to do all of that stuff. Uh, I just interviewed somebody a couple of days ago on, on all of the different sorts of investment vehicles that you can use uh, when you're in your mid 40s. And there's like a lot of them. <laughs> there's a lot of them. Um, and if you're really looking at people who are approaching retirement, which is more your target market mm -hmm. or people who are really, really already like just about to retire, you know, 
still having all of that education available to them will just endear themselves to you. And then the best part is, and Jeremy said this right at the beginning, you know, he doesn't have a sales bone in his body. And our whole focus is to free the world's experts from sales. You shouldn't have to pull the old Zig Ziglar, what do I need to do to get you into this car today? Uh, or what's stopping you from, you know, joining us today, which was a, a close that I used to hear all the time. You know, this is a lot more of, Hey, you really like what we do. Uh, I, I think you're a good fit for who we are, and I'd like to move forward. That's such a different sales process. And when they've already built that relationship with you through podcasting, through social, through your educational opportunities, it just it changes the game. Do you feel that, Jeremy? Do you feel like the game has changed some? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, actually, one thing that helps, this is um, a little side note, but I think you'll appreciate it because you've got a background uh, that you'll like this area. Uh, is that I've taken some motivational interviewing courses. Oh, yeah. So I've I've been hearing for 17 years, the key to success is asking good questions. And for 17 years, I've been asking, what is a good question? No one, no one's from the main stage that says, go ask some mm -hmm. good questions, actually tells you how to go out and ask good questions. So that's literally what this part of uh, psychology and, and therapy has to deal with is motivational interviewing and helps you to motivate people, I'm probably butchering it all, but it helps you to move people along towards a better resolution yes. uh, that they want to want to have. So now I'm just learning how to ask better questions. So now my my sales close, right? If you saw the air quotes, and we're not podcasting, so you can see the air quotes <laughs> right now. Um, but my sales close is, what would what would you like to do next? Yeah. And they'll say, well, how do we get started? Mm -hmm. Or they'll say, well, I got to meet two other people. Yep. Oh, okay. The, do you mind me asking? When are you going to meet them? Uh, you know, Tuesday and Thursday. When would you like me to follow up? Uh, you know, give give us a week to meet them. Another couple of days to talk. How about next Monday? So they're telling me exactly what they want to do next and exactly when to follow up with them. And you can do that as the expert, but you can also do that uh, when you've got a little bit of the the better training. So I finally, about a year ago, uh, learned all this this type of stuff. So yeah, motivational interviewing. Check it out. Oh my God. So you're probably the second person in my entire career of working with financial services professionals who've studied motivational interviewing. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to, you just open up a can of worms, brother. So I have to <laughs> stop here for just a moment. The greatest thing about motivational interviewing is you're not convincing them to do something that they don't want to do. What it is is helping them realize the desired outcome that is a shared beneficial outcome for both of you. That's mm -hmm. a really powerful statement I just made there. It's just the absolute ability to ask open-ended questions. And just mm -hmm. like Jeremy said, you know, well, you know, so, so what are the next steps? Um, where would you like to go from here? Mm -hmm. Um, I've really enjoyed this. Have you, I mean, see there's, and these are all motivational yep. interviewing questions that are really powerful. So everybody on this, you know, check out motivational interviewing. There's some really great free courses. There's also some great courses on Udemy, uh, U D E M Y on motivational interviewing. Now you're not becoming a therapist, so don't worry no. about that. It's just, you're learning how to ask questions in a way that motivates people to make really a decision that's in their best interest and mm -hmm. the best coaches in the world aren't the ones who tell you what to do. They're the ones who make you realize what you need to do. So I don't know what the hell everybody's waiting for, Jeremy. This is the one question that just seems to just baffle me. Uh, you know, yes, there can be uh, compliance issues and all sorts of stuff. But, you know, if you want any of the things on this list here, that's what podcasting can do for you. Now, Jeremy, you've seen this list before because we actually did a podcast a little bit on this. Which one of these, I don't know, 10 things here do you feel has been the best benefit or the biggest benefit to you and your practice? Uh, besides all of them, I don't know. Um, well, I, I th I'm going to go back to just the idea that it's set on my calendar. So every two weeks, I know I have to prepare for the podcast, which doesn't take me too long. If I run out of ideas, you've got a list of 150 that your team has shared with me. So I can just yeah. cruise that, which so far out of 28 or 29, we've, we've cut. I've only had to look at once because you just, just listen to your clients. If you yeah. work within your niche, listen to what they're talking about and they're going to uh, give you ideas to, to answer those questions and so forth on there. And so just the fact that it's on my calendar every two weeks means I have to create some content 
and it's it's really just taking the 15 to 30 minutes to create some ideas. Then you got 30 minutes that you're on with your podcast host that's going to create more ideas because you're just talking it through. You're talking it through with them. And then you guys take the transcript and turn it into all kinds of content uh, from there. And just thinking of the uh, the company, Harley Davidson, uh, I do a lot of work with uh, on there with their employees, is that we started with the podcast and just talking through the podcast gave me enough ideas that I put them onto my website, mm. created a checklist of things to do. And the only reason I had that checklist is because I thought, oh my goodness, I got the podcast coming. I'm trying to tell people the five things they need to do uh, <laughs> if they work at Harley Davidson. So guess what? I have a checklist that has five things on there. So now I have a, a PDF. You got to give me their email to get the PDF for the checklist. Who doesn't mm -hmm. want a checklist from where you can uh, retire? And then we just use that same information to create the webinar. So we were getting things all ready to go. And then they had a really big, uh, they, they cut, cut out 20% of the workforce. Mm -hmm. So when they cut out 20% of the workforce, uh, your team instantly invited everyone that works there in the Milwaukee area to my LinkedIn page. I was talking to some people that work at Harley and they said, well, I didn't know if I'd go to the webinar. I didn't know if I'd call you. Uh, but then I saw, you know, these three guys that I work with. And so I thought I would call you. I have no idea who those three people are. It's just that we got connected on LinkedIn because when your company is letting go people, you say yes to every single LinkedIn request. So yeah. now I've got hundreds of people that company they're on my LinkedIn and hopefully they're seeing kinds of stuff, but it just kept on building on each other that just the, uh, um, kind of the responsibility of having to create the podcast and then, mm -hmm. then using that content to just multiply it to so many different ways, the website, the, the guidebook, the checklist, the, um, the webinar, all that stuff really, really put it together. And and I, I I move to this side because this is really one of the things that you're talking about here is you have to have lots of different touches in lots of different ways to get people to move on this decision continuum, right? Mm -hmm. And and so uh, there was one here um, the, 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 asks a friend if they've tried, right? So that's a, that's number ten. That's the exact thing that you're talking about, even though that they're not really asking a friend, but they're looking at LinkedIn and saying, "Gosh, you're really connected with a whole bunch of people at Harley." Mm -hmm. That must mean something. Yes, it does mean something. It means yeah. I made a concerted effort to connect with those people so I could help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I I've studied there. I've got their 20 page severance packet. I've read through it more times and they've, they haven't even read through it once, you know, for we energies, they have uh, once a year, they have an employee retirement guidebook and I've got enough connections. I can get one once a year and I'm reading through it. It's all the same stuff. It hasn't changed in 10 years, but I want to read it every year. So I have anything that's up to date on there. So, and they don't actually send out that employee guidebook till you file for retirement. So oh. people are trying to decide, should I retire? Should I do this? Should I do that? Well, I've got a copy of the guidebook that's a month old and I can help you out with it. So it's just being on the inside and, and adding value, it's just adding value to a, to a niche. And that's the influence, everybody, that we're talking about. He's adding and creating him his ability to show them that he understands their stuff. Um, I love when early on in the, the webinar today, you were talking about how, you know, they, they both, uh, you know, uh, we and Harley uh, have different words for the same thing, right? Uh, it's the same thing in any company. Every company has their own language, their own vernacular, their own acronyms. And if you truly want to nest, which is what we used to refer to it as nest within a company, you have to know the difference between, you know, what what uh, you know? What we energy is going to say is is retirement or their pension or uh, you know maybe a, a forced savings. I've actually heard that before, which I thought was funny. There's a company who talked about forced savings instead of a 401k, mm -hmm. um, and you know as long as you can talk speak that language, they feel like you're one of them, which helps you build influence. Mm -hmm. But it also does all this stuff, too. And I think we've done a good job, Jeremy, of already going through a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, yeah. again, our our uh, our podcasting being on your calendar helps you stay focused. Mm -hmm. We're already scaling the living heck out of your credibility by doing all of the different things that we can do. Um, it, you've already shown that it, it shortens the sales cycle. Um, but really... You know, when when you look at the the independent things that you've achieved, you have expressly done this, which is one of the reasons why we wanted uh, you on this is you have used the podcast uh, in a way to persuade and inspire people. But more importantly, this is some of the stuff that that happened with your success. So, so I'm going to turn these 
Uh, next couple of slides over to you, because this is mm -hmm. all stuff that you and I have talked about on, on other mediums and class. In fact, we have a case study on Jeremy on our website at top advisor marketing forward slash being your own loud. So Jeremy, why don't, why don't you walk through these? Uh, I think we've got a uh, five or six bullet points here. Yeah. Um, actually, can, uh, I'm going to talk real quick about the scaling credibility part of it. Uh, just that, that you mentioned because, uh, it's not just myself. So I've got another advisor named John and we've got a, another a staff member named Br Brady, who's getting his licenses and all that kind of stuff. So they answer the phone and people call in asking for me, perhaps because they've listened to something referred to it. And, uh, if it's Brady, especially he'll book it on the calendar, but then he'll send out, uh, information they'll, he'll ask, what is it you're looking for? I need need help on the pension or social security. So he'll put on the calendar, but he'll send them uh, information that we've already blogged about, already podcasted about, about social security or pensions or 401ks. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even have to really know that stuff. He's learning it, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but I just took my brain and, and doubled it because he can take that information and, and send it out to clients with, or prospects when they're asking about that. And then John, um, he said, I don't know how many times, People call in or they book on the calendar. Well, it gets on his calendar because I happen to be busy at that exact time. So he talks to them and and he stops asking me now because for the first few times he'd say, "Oh, I think they're looking for you." So we'll just go ahead because they're they came in uh, from a referral or from the the email list or webinar or whatnot. Well, now he's he's talking with them and and making them clients because he's using our language. He listened to all our podcasts. He's exactly our language. Uses our our process. And then you've already, I've given him the credibility, just like a referral gives you credibility by telling the, their friend, you should go work with, with my advisor. I've given John credibility because he speaks the same language. He uses the same process. And then they just figure, well, if Jeremy trusts John enough, you know, so now it's, now it's growing it. our business that I, I don't have to yeah. be the one in every single meeting, every single sales meeting, you know, even if you want to call it a yeah. sales meeting. Yeah. So that's been, that's been great. So let's dive into some of these things, my friend. Yeah, so uh, it was great. Uh, you guys told me uh, you got lucky on this one. <laughs> it takes a little bit longer, but it we did. and what was smart actually, what you did is you uh, you have us record three episodes so that when you publish the first one, if somebody likes it, they can listen to more. Yeah. So we got a lead as one of the paid online leads, and it showed up on a Thursday, like right before Thanksgiving last year. And then I called them, and then she wanted to get together, and I said. Uh, she happens to work in marketing. I said, Oh, can you do me a favor? I just listened to, I just released today my first, my podcast. I'm going to send it to you. Let me know what you think. She said, Sure, I'd love to. You know, what does she got to do? She just got let go from the company. Might as well <laughs> listen to the podcast. So she comes in the next week and said, I listened to it. That's what I want. Uh, how do we get started? Like, I, did, I didn't even open my mouth uh, for the sales meeting, whatever you want to call it that. So I just had this. She, she knew me. She listened to me for, 75 minutes. Mm -hmm. She knew everything she needed to know about uh, the first episode was who I was. The second episode uh, was about uh, our sales process, or not sales process, our planning process. Mm -hmm. And then the next episode was part one of our five parts. So she'd already listened to everything that she really needed to know. She basically listened to our initial consultation meeting three times uh, in a way. So that was, that was great too. And then from there, she's referred others. Other people have referred into there. And, um, yeah, that's exactly where I think, um, we're above the 3 million now, not just from that one client, but other clients that have been attracted to us from the podcast. Now, just recently are some of the ones I referred to you on. There's, uh, two people that came in on our calendar, actually John's calendar. We can't figure out where they came from. I mean, it's the one lady told us that it was because she found our podcast. So that's, uh, that's great. And yeah, our, our leads from smart asset, we were getting about 4% closing rate. So you have a hundred, you pay for, you get four clients out of that. And that seems to be roughly in line, maybe on the low side, because I'm not a sales guy. Right. But now it's up to 6%, just, just since we started the podcast. And at the same time, I'm having other people, uh, booking those people making mm -hmm. the initial outreach because they can, they have my authority now, uh, and they're using my words, my language, my process. And when somebody says, Oh, I called in or I, I went to Smart Asset and I want to find an advisor because I need help with my pension. Great. Let's book a time and we're going to send you the the podcast we did about, about pensions, what you ought to uh, be looking at that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So you you've actually you, where a lot of people have have kind of not necessarily not grown, but a lot of people with their practices on hold um, because of the podcast, because of the virtual nature and because you're allowing people to get to know who you are and what makes you unique and different in the mediums they prefer while they're there. Um, how were you compared to other advisors that were in your network who had moved to this this RIA? Have you talked to them and, and are they growing like you are? Yeah, well, um, a lot of my advisor friends are still more in the career channel, the more, you know, employer mm -hmm. owner type of deal versus actually, you know, having your own firm with a hybrid RA that we're with. And um, we just have a lot more capability to use the webinars, to use the podcast, to use MailChimp to send out emails. Um, so it's been, it's been great on that end of it. But just the, the credibility piece of it, so many people want to do business with you and they want to sit across from you and shake your hand. Mm -hmm. Well, now sitting across from you might be out. Shaking your hand is definitely out. Uh, we've closed business. It blows my mind. I, if you told me a year ago, I'd get a, a million dollar clients and a half million dollar clients and a half million dollar client from people I've never met in person. I, mm -hmm. I've seen them this way through Zoom. Um, I There's no way I would have believed that. But all those people, you do the Zoom calls, they're getting on your email list, they're listening to your podcast every two weeks. They really know who you are and they feel like they can trust you because they, I mean, they should, if you're on this call, they should be, you should be trustworthy, <laughs> but <laughs> of it, you get the proof of it by them listening to you, getting used to your, your voice and your mannerisms and your, your process and all that good stuff. So step, step number one of all of this stuff, one is for 2021, we want you all to consider, you know, Jeremy said that he's spending about 15% of gross, not net on marketing. We recommend that you're spending anywhere from, you know, seven to 15% on gross. So uh, we just wanted to show you some examples, if you don't mind, of what we do and how we build your online persona. And these are just examples of, of the cover art uh, that we have professionally made and tailored to you. Uh, you know, this has got Jeremy's uh, color scheme and the next one's a, a better example. Look, this is his LinkedIn profile. It screams who he is. The word retirement is all over this. Uh, if you look at it, it's one, two, three, Four places within the first eye shot, right? Mm -hmm. Good color scheme right there. Talk about the podcast. You know, uh, it's it's perfectly, perfectly branded for people to get the attention. And these are some of the things that uh, other people who are rushing into this area, whether it's podcasting or social media, don't do, which is to make sure that everything is consistent across the board. So whether they're, you know, looking at this or they're looking at this, right? Everything feels like Jeremy, mm -hmm. right? And that's another very powerful component of a structured and organized social media strategy uh, and really digital marketing strategy in general is making sure that things don't look cobbled together. When you're using other people's content, right? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't look and feel like you. Do you, do you, when you read this stuff, are you like, man, that I, I said that? Yeah, well, you did. And um, actually, I'll, I'll give you another story, but real quick, I want to mention that you had um, someone on that list of nine there, the Brady Bunch little thing you had going on. One of them was from RBC, which mm -hmm. I don't know fully about RBC, but I believe it's just kind of more of a wirehouse yes. broker dealer. So it's you're, you're not out of the woods. You, you're not, um, if you work at a firm that you feel like you have compliance issues and that kind of stuff, you might be able to get through a lot, a lot quicker. Um, especially because when you're podcasting, when you're talking, these big firms, the big problem, they're just making sure that you aren't saying buy my annuity for 10% yeah. of your gains. Right. If you're not talking about financial contracts, what's the big compliance issue? And what client, what prospect wants to hear you talking about financial contracts? They want to be talking about planning and concepts and all kinds of things that have nothing to do with regulatory type of stuff. So you can you don't have to be an independent advisor to to go through the podcasting uh, on there. Yeah, I just I really wanted to highlight some of the stuff that that uh, 
we know that these are posts that you did get clicks on that that uh, people mm-hmm. were paying attention. I mean, in in we're hitting hot button hot button issues here. Social security. What do you need to know, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, here's here's another one. Uh, Social security for women specifically. You did a podcast on mm-hmm. this, uh, and. Uh, it, it most people don't know that if they make the wrong decision and take it at the wrong time or elect the wrong thing, goodness gracious, they're they're really screwed. And and you covered that in the podcast. Mm-hmm. Of course, you were much more professional uh, than I was there because I really don't know that much about it. But again, see see look look at all of these components. They're just very warm. Mm-hmm. They're there. They make a lot of sense. Here's other examples of different. Uh, how we question actually hold on let me see if i can move our noggins here so there there one of the things that we just recently did was we just did a presentation on basically how to write the perfect social media post and by asking really good questions we want to make sure that the social media posts are engaging so that people don't feel that they're talked at they feel like they're talked mm-hmm. to and with and i love this and especially this first one uh you know with marsha's podcast that you did with her it just seems very powerful now here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is um now you interviewed marcia correct mm-hmm. yep okay yeah you got it now does she have her own network right yeah absolutely and actually sure. real quick on that that yeah. number that top podcast where I said I'm the number three podcast right yeah. now on Google. It's this one. Oh my gosh. I think it has everything to do with it's a, it's a good topic, you know, social security advice mm-hmm. for, for women who doesn't want to click on that. A lot of people want to click on that, but then I've got to push pushed out through my network. She's got pushed out through her network. So I have a feeling that's the reason why that one particular episode, that's the one that's risen to the top. And we walk our clients through nine podcasting tactics, and that's one of the tactics. It's actually tactic number two is to bring people and interview them on your show to make sure that they have a good network. So you kind of concentrically or almost like a Venn diagram is a better way to look at it, how you're going to start having a lot more overlap, whether that's with the social security expert an estate planning attorney, a CPA, a divorce attorney, you know, we have lifestyle topics for you. There's lots of different ways to skin this cat. And the best part about it is as you continue to get more comfortable behind the microphone, guess what? You can interview more and more people. And one of our case studies is a perfect example of that on the Be Your Own Loud page is one of our advisors who brought in 30 million in assets last year by specifically doing the center of influence um, technique that we teach. Um so the social media posts are there, but we also do something else for you, Jeremy. Would you mind talking a little bit about how we utilize uh, LinkedIn for you specifically? Yeah. So you got me sign up with Sales Navigator, which is part of LinkedIn type of stuff. And it's great, powerful, but it's also a little complex. I, mm-hmm. I don't know how to use it, but your team does. And basically once uh, or 100 people a week are being invited to be part of my LinkedIn connections. And you've got a, a nurture sequence for people that uh, say yes. You've got a nurture sequence for people that uh, don't you know, ignore the request. Mm-hmm. And in the last year, I've grown from, I think, about 1,800 to over 3,000 connections on, on LinkedIn. And that just means every time a social media post goes out, there's more and more people that, that see mm-hmm. it. So... <clears throat> Our big picture goal is, you know, what I talked about at the top of the show, uh, you know, which is really to free the world's experts from sales, but really stop the sales cycle insanity. So many of you started off like Jeremy did, you know, in the wirehouse where they, you know, you started off selling insurance where somebody walked up to you and said, this is how I did it, 19 diggity two. And, you know, they hand you a phone book and you're, you know, cold calling. That's really not the way to do it anymore. Uh, You have to rise above the noise. And most importantly, you have to be your own loud. People want to connect with you as a person. They don't want to connect with a brand or product outside of that. Now they can do that later, but the first thing is going to be connecting with you specifically. So we believe that sales is a torment. It's like a certain circle of Dante's hell, right? Uh, And most of you who are experts just don't like selling. Um, How awesome is it to be able to ask that final question? You know, what are the next steps or where would you like to go from here? That's such a different conversation than, Mm -hmm. I mean, or uh, here's my other favorite one. You know, 
if you know anybody who, you know, might be able to use our service, I would love for you to say, Hey, you know what? Uh, Jeremy's got a podcast and I really enjoy it. That's really different, Jeremy, than saying, mm -hmm. who are your five closest work associates? Oh, yeah, right. Sure. Uh, where, who do you go to church with? B give me your phone and give me those phone numbers. Now, there's people who still do that. Everybody yeah. that game is not a fun game. One and two, most people don't like that. You're not, um, furthering the relationship there your relationship kind of comes to a halt because mm -hmm. you're going for that hard hard close so we asked there's three things that you can do here everybody now jeremy obviously chose the, the 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 second one here which is the outsource uh this is where he ended up uh moving which we of course support wholeheartedly mm -hmm. but i want you to look at these things because you can insource it right you can totally do this now this is the opposite of what jeremy our guest has done and really the opposite of what we've done here at top advice our marketing because we outsource an enormous amount of stuff so Kirk, Lisa, and I sat down uh, and we actually calculated how much time it takes our team to do this work for people. And then we multiplied it by three. And the reason why we did that is because we're wildly efficient. We have all of the systems in place. And most of you have to learn how to do this. Podcasting, the editing, which is a huge component of that time, the content multiplication, you know, optimizing the social media profiles and doing all of the boosting, you know, which is about 80, 80 plus hours a month. Now, Jeremy, I don't know what you bill an hour, but what do you think most financial services professionals bill or think that they're worth an hour? I bill 275. So Let's do the math at 150 because that's easier. So that's uh, that's 12 grand a, a month. 12 grand a month. Yeah. Right. And so for you know anywhere from 12 to 30 thousand dollars a year, where you don't have mm -hmm. to manage anybody, you know that's really where we come in with with the whole full boat of everything. And you know, I just think. There's a great book that was really popular a while ago called The Four Hour Work Week. Oh, I don't yeah. know if anybody actually ever read that. You should, because it was brilliant, but it talked all about outsourcing, right? You stay in your lane and you get everything else done. And I'm just, I'm really hoping that there's less and less advisors who are going to continue to put their heads in the sand and realize that they can podcast. We've built this entire program uh, from com for compliance, right? This is... Uh, we have been approved through just about every major, even wirehouse from a compliance standpoint. Um, as Jeremy said earlier, you know, if you're not talking about that, that annuity, that's going to give you a 25% guaranteed compounded rate of return. Uh, you know, you're not going to get in trouble. Jeremy's talking about planning. He's talking about retirement. He's talking about life. He's talking about social security. And we also have all of the disclosures and disclaimers that you need mm -hmm. to make sure that that's not going to be a, a big issue. Just check the box in your mind. You know, where do you want to go? Do you want to outsource? Do you want to ignore it and realize that somebody like Jeremy, if you're in the, you know, if you're in Wisconsin, general Milwaukee area, you know, Jeremy's going to have 50 to 70 podcasts in the can. He's going to look so much different than you because the best time to start a podcast was really years ago. Uh, but now you can do it. You can get a bunch of your thought leadership in the can, and that's going to help out a whole bunch. We would just like for you to subscribe to our podcast. Uh, don't worry about, you know, the fact that a lot of you are doing the strategic planning that you need to be doing for 2021 right now. Just listen to the podcast, Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. Find out who we are, what we do, and our philosophy on all of this stuff. Um, because really the big picture here is it's like the Wonder Twins, right? When you get together with a person who compliments you or an organization that can listen to you and turn who you are into something greater, that really changes everything. And we're not a lead factory. We're very, very simple. We are a relationship factory. Jeremy is building relationships with people when it's convenient for them to have that relationship built in the mediums they prefer, whether that's the blogs, whether that's being on his website, like the one lady listens to Google when she's at work or on, you know, on your phone, on social media, wherever you are, you have to be ever present and omnipresent to make sure that you're getting your message out. All right, Jeremy, if, what, 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 uh, what do you want to say to close this out today? Oh, this is uh it's been fun. I love, uh, I've loved this whole relationship. That's why I like, talking about it and would love it if uh, others get to experience the the fun of creating your own podcast. Uh, I mean, if we, we like to tell people that if you know more about your money, you'll feel better about your money and you'll make better decisions about your money. And 
when you are somebody that's podcasting, you get the ability to practice the way you speak to your clients and your prospects without having them in, in the room there. Um, I'm just thinking, actually, I think I shared this with you a little while ago, but I taught a few courses at college, just three mm -hmm. or four, about 10 years ago, which meant I had three days a week for 15 weeks straight. I basically gave 50 seminars to 20 year old college seniors at 8 a.m. And all of a sudden my seminars got better. Well, now this time around, <laughs> I'm doing a podcast every two weeks and all of a sudden my webinars are getting better. My time in front of the clients are getting better. It's, it's mm -hmm. free practice in a way. And then it's also just multiplying to get you in front of more people. You know, Michael Jordan, uh, took free throw shots every day, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when is the last time that you practiced? Uh, when we talk about the fact that podcasting makes you look more professional and allows you to get your expertise out into the marketplace in a different way, but it also increases your confidence, right? right? Yeah. How awesome is it when you can say you have a podcast and when you have a client in front of you, who's asking you social security, security questions. And you're like, hell, I did a 40 minute presentation right. on this. I'm ready to go. Exactly. So, well, we want to thank everybody for taking time to be on the, the webinar today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me, Matt at topadvisorm.com. Uh, make sure that you follow both of us on social because then you can see what's going on. Um, but you know what? We really appreciate Jeremy you being here today. And thanks for being such an awesome client too, brother. It's been fun. All right. Thanks everybody. Bye.